Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. A couple of days ago, I did the video and there were some comments asking where the pink book was, but in my defense, there was only two rumors. I thought, I'm backing myself to remember both of them, and I did, so I was correct. But today's ones, the pink book is back. The rumours are listed because it's quite a lot. It's a general roundup of the gossip around West Ham's transfers. And you can't say I don't pay attention to you in the comments. Unlike some of these, I won't be paying attention to some of these. Let's start with yesterday's report, though, that West Ham will not, or Dan Moyes, will not be conducting any transfer business until mid-July, once the Euro's over and done with. I'm not sure I necessarily believe it. You tell me Man United rang up to mother and said Jesse Lingard is available for £5 million. West Ham would say, well, actually, we don't really fancy that because we're waiting until mid-July for the sake of it. It's not going to happen, is it? I think most teams won't be doing much activity until then. Of course, Aston Villa have done stuff and Leicester are making moves. Norwich City have done a transfer, but that was a domino effect of Aston Villa's business. Arsenal last year, Ben White. So teams are conducting their business, but West Ham, by the sounds of it, are being quite patient. Is this an issue or not? I get why some people are a bit frustrated. We've just come off the back of a good season. We're in a good position to attract players to the club. I understand why they want players. They want to see West Ham making moves. However, it depends, doesn't it? If we... It depends how the transfer window closes. If we end up with David Moyes as number one striker, number one midfielder, number one centre back, then it's the right thing to do. However, if we miss out on said players, then it's the wrong thing to do. You look at last summer, we obviously missed out on Eberdachi Eze. David Moyes has confirmed he wanted Eze since he went to Crystal Palace. So we possibly did the wrong thing a year ago. But as it stands, I'm not reading too much into that rumour. But the rumour that was going around a couple of days ago, the big news is that we had bid £18 million for Fiorentina centre-back Nikola Milenkovic. Um, I can't say I know too much about him. Serra uh, is not a league I watch too much of, if I'm honest with you. But what is concerning or exciting or intriguing, I think intriguing is the right word, we're being really linked with a lot of like left-sided centre-backs rather than right-sided centre-backs. Even if they are right-footed, most of them that we've been linked to play to the left of the centre-backs, a bit like what Winston Reid did when he was at West Ham. So that intrigues me a little bit as to why we would be doing that. Is there something wrong with the bonnet? Is our bonnet off? Are we planning on playing with a back three and taking Crespel out of the defence? What is the long-term plan? Should these rumours be correct? Because he, there's not, like I said, there's not just one left-sided centre-back we've been linked to. There's quite a few of them as well. There's also right-sided ones as well. So it sort of doesn't add up. Of course, not all rumours are true, however. But anyway, um, the rumour was that we bid £18 million for him. Uh, not necessarily being rejected, but Fiorentina want more money, that they want 25 to £30 million for him. So we'll see how that one pans out. We are also still being linked to the Hungarian um, centre-back that plays for Fenerbahce, um, Attila Sazali. I butchered that name. I feel a bit... Not bad, it's just not really... A big deal is it having watched Hungary as much as I'd like because obviously on Sunday they were playing Germany what a game that was but at the same time fans in Portugal were also playing out their fantastic game of football too so I've probably watched more of the games in that group that don't consist of Hungary I watched them play France though yeah the 1-1 draw against France I watched that Hungarian game he looked good in that but I've watched him for 90 minutes in his whole career so I'm not going to pay too much attention However, the price tag, though, £22 million. So it's a hefty price tag that's been attached to him. And again, a left-sided centre-back. You get why I'm intrigued yet? Also, I'm in the last transfer rumour show. I dismissed a striker. We were linked with Paul Onayachu. Onayachu? I think that's his name. Nigerian striker. He's 27, who plays for Genk. Now, he's been banging in the goals in the Belgium League. But last, last week when I did it, I dismissed it because I think the source was Nigerian football and I thought, well, I've never really known them to have in, in the nose at West Ham or anything like that. So I dismissed it. But since then, the rumours sort of gathered a lot of momentum. But I don't know if it's A, genuine or B, it's the domino effect. I spoke about it a few weeks ago that someone starts reporting it and before you know it, everyone else is reporting it because they're reporting it. It's a fear of missing out, isn't it? And I think there's probably a little bit of that going on. He does fit the profile to some extent. He's six foot seven. He's a big lad. And while I don't watch clips on YouTube, you know, the Gonzo does that. We call, That's why I call the Gonzo. When you look up a player on YouTube, you look up the highlights on YouTube, you're Gonzo in that player. While I don't do that, I have to confess, I saw his goals on Twitter. I didn't mean to. I was scrolling. And it was just there. The video automatic play, automatically plays, didn't it? And the first clip was him doing like a somersault. And I thought, oh, that's a nice celebration. 
And I started. I ended up watching all these goals, and there was about over thirty of them. It's quite a lot. He scored a lot last season. So I sat there watching. I don't know why I'm doing this from my phone. See, I sat there watching my phone, not the palm of my hand. I watching my phone, thinking this guy can score. It's not just his headers. It's, he was getting played through in goal and dinking it over the keeper and stuff. There was a lot to like about it. However. All that shows is that he's good at finishing in the Belgium League. It doesn't show his build-up play. It doesn't show how he if he runs a channel. It doesn't show if he presses or works hard. But his finishing certainly looks very good anyway. But like I said, maybe I dismissed it a little bit too easy because the rumours have gathered pace. But like I said, I do wonder if there is a fear of missing out on the rumour because should this player then join West Ham and you who reports on West Ham haven't said that this might happen, you're going to look a little bit silly, aren't you? So... I'm going to leave on the back burner for now. Lazio supposedly interested in Felipe Anderson for around 7 million. Now, the interesting thing about this is not the fact that it's 7 million. That would obviously be helpful. But we probably still owe Lazio roughly 7 million. We wouldn't have paid all his transfer fee up front. We pay it in installments. We know that most football clubs do that anyway. So we pay in installments. So we're probably due Lazio around about 7 to 10 million or something on the transfer. So should we sell him for 7 million? plus not have to pay an instalment of around £7 million. It just Technically, it's a £14 million transfer for West Ham. That would make good sense. So £7 million on paper doesn't look too much, but when you think about it, it's worth £14 million to West Ham. But like I said, I'm making these figures up to some extent. It's educational guessing, if you like. And I think that's a good deal. I think getting rid of Felipe Anderson is a good deal for West Ham, to be honest with you. He's on big wages as well. And when we're trying to bring in players, or we're trying to bring in... Which, I'll get on to in a minute. We're trying to bring in two or three youngsters as well. It's almost like, would you rather have four or five 18, 19, 20 year olds that might make it or one Felipe Anderson? I think you'd probably want to go for the 20 year olds kind of thing at the minute. So, Felipe Anderson, I expect him to leave. Um, him, the Athletic are reporting that Felipe Anderson, Andre Yarmolenko, Winston Reid, and Exonde Silva are the four players that were actively trying to move on in the summer. No surprises there. Three of them are on big wages. Three of them didn't play much last season for West Ham. Well, all four of them didn't play. One of them was out on loan. Um, Zondi Silva is one of those players we bought in, took a punt on him, doesn't work out. We move him on and get a little bit of cash back for him. It doesn't cost us that much to have a little look at him. I like these deals. Um, Kral has been disappointing at the Euros. The Athletic are reporting that we're perhaps cooling our interest in Alex Kral because of his performances for Czech Republic, or lack of performances for Czech Republic at the Euros. What I will say is, I think that's stupid. I don't necessarily believe it. But if it was true, I think it's a bit daft. Because a tournament football is completely different to club football. There are some players that excel for clubs and do rubbish for countries. There are some players that do rubbish the other way around. Uh, they do well, they do rubbish for clubs, but excel at countries. Paul Pogba, for example, the guy's probably been the player of the tournament so far. And we know he's got the ability, he just doesn't bother for Man United, but for France, he lights it up. So to judge someone off the back of tournament football, which is a completely different environment, you're in a camp, you're away from your family, three games of football a week, you know, it's, it's completely different to normal life. And I just don't think you can judge a player off a tournament. I don't think you should be buying a player off the back of it, but I also don't think you should be, if you've gone into this Euro thinking, Alex Kral's near the top of our shortlist, let's have a look at him against these three teams oh it's not that good I don't think you should end your interest in him I just think tournament football is just so different everything is so much different about it the referee is different the, the pace of the game is different you know what you see at the Euros is not how the Premier League is played out kind of thing I just think it would be stupid to want or not want a player off the back of a tournament I just don't see Darren Moyes doing that either has Moyes looked at him probably he's been at the Scotland game so he would have seen us against Czech Republic when Alex Kral started and didn't perform very well and got subbed. He would have seen that, but I doubt David Moyes went, well, that's that then. Six months of scouting Alex Kral out the window because he's played rubbish for an hour against Scotland. Um, I just don't really believe that rumour, to be fair. Um, Eddie Nketiah, we linked to him again, the Arsenal striker, who you'd imagine is going to leave. He's been linked away with, from Arsenal so much. He's been restricted with his game time. Like I said, I think... A striker like that sort of makes sense to us. I'd be okay with it, providing we get eight other strikers. I don't want him and only him. Is he good enough to bench Mikel Antonio? Maybe long term, but short term, I don't think he would be. Um, Alex Twanzebe, who... No, Alex. Axel. His name's Axel. Axel Twanzebe, the Man United centre-back, is rumoured to be available on loan, and we're interested, should we not get one of our main targets? That's a deal that I think would make sense. 
But because I think he's a talented player, he just can't get into the Man United side. And there's no shame in that. I know people will dismiss the Man United centre backs, and I get it to some extent. I'm not Lindelof's biggest fan, I'm not Bali's biggest fan, but I do think Harry Maguire is one of the best centre backs in the Premier League. Not to get in ahead of him is no shame, but I think a loan deal would be good for him. I think getting someone like him in at West Ham, little financial cost would also be good. I think obviously Man United now know that they can send players to West Ham. And they will get game time. They, they can perform. I mean, should they do that, the value goes up. The interest in them goes up. So I think this ticks the boxes for Man United. Gets their player out on loan. Valuable game time. And it ticks the boxes for West Ham. Low risk. Good player. Good addition to the club. And a centre-back that I think we need depth. I don't, I'm not sure we need upgrading yet. I think there's other areas to take priority. But certainly we could do a other player in there so I think this one would make fantastic sense should it be true now we're linked with a couple of youngsters I say linked with them we believe that they are on the verge of joining we've got a Peterborough United player who's coming on trial Alder Nasser, Nasento Nasento I think his name is I've never heard of these players and then a Celtic winger now this one's a little bit controversial I'm not going to go into too much detail just google the name if you want to know why it's controversial um, I don't know how it sits with me, to be honest with you. Uh, Armstrong Ocoflex. Um, I'm going to try and put the links to all the players I speak about in this video in the description below. So if I'm butchering the pronunciation, just click on the player links and you'll go to the profile on Transfer Market and you can have a little look at them yourself. Um, he was in the press a couple of years ago for the wrong reasons. It's, it's something that will be a bit of an iffy subject for a lot of people. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much though, but that's two players we're being linked with. And Nesri we're being linked with him once again, a severe striker offer. I just can't see that happening whatsoever. And apparently we had a bid rejected for Giovanni Simone. Yes, Dago's son, uh, the striker over in Italy. We apparently tried to get him in on loan with an option to buy at the end of the season, and that was dismissed by the club. However, given this sort of strength of the rumour if you like I'm going to dismiss that one as being untrue anyway but there you go plenty of West Ham transfer rumours the funny thing is you've got all these rumours but you've also got one rumour saying that we're not going to be buying anyone for the next three weeks or something so there's a point of other rumours but as it stands I'm quite calm and uh, we haven't missed out on any of our main targets Lingard's still Man United Tammy Abraham's still Chelsea Kral's still doing rubbish in the Euros, so all our main targets are still where they were at the start of the window, so I'm still pretty relatively calm. The transfer window's only been open for two and a half weeks kind of thing, um, but but it's an, it's an important summer for West Ham. We've got to get this right. Lots of that stuff will be made up. There might be one or two true... It fell. Um, there might be one or two rumours in there that are true, but like I said, the thing that intrigues me the most is how many left-sided centre-backs we're being linked with. Perhaps I'm reading too much into it, but I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes, there is just too much smoke without fire. But anyway, if you enjoyed this roundup, drop a like on it, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll be back very soon with another West Ham video. Catch you in a bit.